All right, traders, George here, and time for a Happy New Year look at some major markets. Let's jump right into it. DSR model for gold futures to start out. This is from the last video. One of the calls was to look for price below 12.10 as a short entry, looking for a trip down to retest these lows here. Got within two bucks of that uh, low, and then since then we've popped up a bit. So real good follow through there. Where we are right now is gold is really at the edge of a cliff yet again. We break below 11.79. All these prior downside targets 100% relevant. The one that's the most important, 8.90 to 9.45. That's really the one that has the most prior trading commitment and the one that I'm looking to to see if the bulls can put in support there on a major further correction in gold. Now, if we don't go any lower and we hold this floor right now, right where we are, everything from that last video still holds true. Look for a trip back up to 67.50s, then 13.56, 14.29s. However, None of this matters to the upside until the bulls start trading above and closing above 1430. And this is why. This is the other edge of the uh, analysis here for gold. To the balance beams now, this spike here is a little bit higher than where we are. So we're actually below a pretty intense commitment zone. And then look to the next key balance beam. It's here, and there's about 1430, just north of 1400. We could rally up and then start going into immense overhead resistance. There's a lot of commitment here, and that comes a lot from traders getting short here and allowing price to move in favor. The chore here for gold is to not drop any further. I'm expecting gold to drop further until it proves itself out. First step would be going higher than last month's candle here, but the intense commitment here in the 900 area is what's really pulling price with a two-stage ratio target above and below it. This one down here could be interesting if we actually sell off very quickly, slice through this area, do a bit of a head fake to new lows, rope in new shorts below this area, which we certainly would, and then have price move back up and then create a big short squeeze right about here. And you could see price come right back up to this level in that scenario. That's really one that uh, I'm looking to see happen. Again, think about if then around price, look to where these key levels are and key commitment areas are, and it makes the job a lot easier. So you might think that we're putting in a double bottom here, and we could be, but then look to the left. We still got to go up a handful of dollars just to clear this spike. So it's aggressive on a position trade basis to be long here with that immediate overhead resistance. Not to say that it won't pop up, but the likelihood becomes more difficult with that writing right above us, okay? So that's what I'm looking at for gold. More downside and a real bell ringer here at about 900. Let's move on to another market. Here's the Euro, 14 nines down to new structure lows at 1200. One to one harmonic up to the middle of the chart here. Another key ratio point sell off real strong. And then the development of a cup and handle pattern. At about 13.8, we would see price over this recent resistance level. And we're really set to pop up quite a bit here in the euro. So the big move I'm looking at in the euro is for a bullish pop of several hundred, 400 pips to the next key target zone, which is 14.2. We do need to get up a bit higher. We're at 13.788. We need to get up about another 100 pips or so to be riding comfortably above this area here. But in doing so, you can see a real rapid move up to 14.2s. As this was a one-to-one -one harmonic move up, it gives the opportunity for a continuation where this now becomes a one and a new one to one harmonic projects to 14,330. This would be the main target to look to on a move up here and one that you would expect a key resonance with the traders putting in a resistance swing here, pulling back, perhaps testing 14,2 as support. And then if it remains bullish, retesting this, break above, boom, boom, you hit the next two targets 14,550 and 14,9. To the downside, we start trading below 13,6. That would undo a lot of the recent energy the euro has seen and likely drive it down another 150 plus pips. We're at 13.788s right now. This prior resistance swing here at 13.7s, so a break below 13.7 would likely see us dropping another 100 pips to retest 13.6. We can hang on here, watch for a big pop in the euro. That's pretty much all you need to know about the euro. All right, here's the S&P futures continual DSR model again. While the euro, I'm looking for a big breakout to the upside. And for gold, primarily looking for a strong continuation down. For the S&P E-mini, I'm still looking for further upside. But initially, as we start out the new year here, 
uh, we could actually go up about another 15 points or so before we get to the extremity of that first big target zone in the 1800s. I'm really looking for a pullback in the S&P, but to find a bullish resumption of the trend when it does so. The three main zones to watch are 1720. This zone here, which comes in about 1625 up to about 1645, two support swings very close to each other. And this zone right here, uh, we can say that 1550 to 1575 is the range. This is the most important swing right here. The reason why is that this correlates to the breakout over the 2000 and 2007 highs in the S&P. Of course, the high in 2007 was the all-time high. Now we have a new all-time high, new all-time high. Here's the big pullback to test that as support, then boom, classic bull continuation pattern. Maybe we put in a head and shoulders top here, or we just get sort of a, a drifting down. I want to see which of these zones here provide support. If we do not go any lower than this support swing here, that would be the most bullish scenario where we break out of the plateau from 2007, 2000, and we don't go back and test it. We come near it, and then that's it. We never see it again, at least for quite some time. So not only am I looking for a pullback, but I'm looking for a bullish resumption of the trend when that happens. Uh, those are the three main price points to watch, 1720, this zone here in the 1620 to 40s, and then down here, the correlation to the highs in 2000 and 2007. And just to show you how strong things are in the S&P, um, note the heavy commitment levels here, 1760, 1790, 1800s. This is all over the last several months. There's a lot of commitment below where we are and we're higher. That's bullish. So where we are now, we could pull back 40 points and just test essentially 1800 as support. So the market could certainly pull back 50, 60, 70 points and not even be a mosquito bite to this trend here. We get below 1750s and we're probably going to get down to about 1690. And that also shows you some strong commitment there. Uh, so some initial, maybe lighter areas to watch for an even more resilient trend. But um, where we come in for that support, be one of these balance beam zones or one of those DSR levels, a couple of them collide like this one here, 1550. And then the 1720 uh, zone here is the top line of this beam right here. All right, these guys don't even show up on the DSR yet, uh, yet they're relatively substantial commitments in terms of structure, maybe not so much. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for, a bullish pullback in the S&P, a bullish breakout continuation in the euro, and most likely new lows for gold, but keeping a watchful eye in that 1356 and 1429 swing area for gold. All right, that'll do it for the initial projections for those three markets. We'll see you back in the live room.